Hello everybody and welcome to another video of IL2 Battle of Stalingrad. What you're seeing right there is the last plane that was added to IL2 Battle of Stalingrad and it is also the last one on the list. Right now all the planes that have been announced are in the game and it's nearing completion. What you're seeing here of course is the Heinko 111 H6. And look at that, she is a beauty. Now I gotta admit, I'm not an expert when it comes to uh, to bombers, and uh, so I don't know if there is anything wrong with this model per se. I'm going to show off some nice pictures in the end of this video, just from the interior and exterior. So any of you guys who has uh, more of a keen eye when it comes to bombers, you guys can. Uh, Look at those pictures and tell me if anything's wrong. Now the lighting here in the hangar isn't per se that good, so we'll take this out on a flight and see how it looks from the interior. And I'll show you all the little things you can do with this plane. But before we do that, I want to show off the new map that was added to the game. And the last update, here you go. I think this is something that was also done in collaboration with members of the community which is very nice to see. This is also the name of the map right here, Novo Sokolniki. I, I don't know how to say that. Novo Sokolniki? Niki? Yeah, I guess that's the name. And yeah, it's nice to see something like this uh, to make itself into the game as well. And something that I haven't shown you yet is uh, the customization options of this game, I think. So let's have a look here. Um, of course, we can use um, fuel. We can select the fuel amount. Let's just go for... 65% uh, sounds good. And the payload variant. So we can choose anything between 60 and 50 kilogram bombs, uh, for 250 kilogram bombs, and a mix of these, uh, these, these options. Um, I think 60 and 50 kilogram sounds uh, pretty reasonable at the moment. Um, so let's just take that. Then we have further customization option, and I think in the full game you will be able to uh, unlock these with experience uh, you gain on certain planes. Now I'm not quite sure if that is really how it's going to be. Uh, it's not like going, it's going to be like War Thunder, although I'm going to explain the, the big differences between War Thunder and IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad in an upcoming video. But yeah, there are these options right now, they're all unlocked, so I'm presuming this is also what's going to happen. I think actually I heard from somebody that they're going to be unlocked in single player mode. But um, yeah, no definite answer on that from me. Don't take anything I said on, on the upgrades uh, from me as chiseled into stone. Now, the options we have here for the defensive armament is a barely 20mm cannon. This is this one right here. So let's just click on that and we'll see how it changes. There we go. Saw that gun change. And a nose 20mm. There we go. Now, I'm not quite sure what made the Germans think that it would be a good idea to put a 20 millimeter gun here and here and not here and here. I'm pretty sure there's a perfectly viable explanation to this. Um, I don't know it. As I said, I don't know about much about bombers. I, I, I guess maybe they thought about, um, low, low passes or something with their bombers, but really this, this doesn't make much sense uh, since most fighters will come from behind. And then I see we have some heavy bombs as well. We can have two 1,000 kilogram bombs. And we can add another 1,800 kilogram bomb to that. And we can add a massive 250 kilogram bomb. I think we're going to keep this one for next video, guys, because this sounds pretty damn awesome. And it seems you can also, yep, you can get rid of this one as well. So you know what? Let's just go for the two 1,000 kilogram bombs. That sounds pretty reasonable for now. Paint schemes, there you go, nothing is available yet. Um, not that uh, white paint scheme is really going to help this massive plane. So we're just going to accept that and see what we can do. Okay, so here we are at the helm of our Heinkel 111. And as you can see, great little detail on this aircraft. You can see also how vulnerable the pilot really was with all this glass around him. And... Lots of good stuff right there. You can see, I believe this is the Bombardier. And if we look to our back, we have a little door here that a crew can come in. But I believe the pilot and the Bombardier, or at least this, this gunner here, would come from a hatch that was on the bottom of the cockpit. 
and there's this really well-known picture of Goering trying to squeeze himself in there. Uh, obviously not having much success, but eventually he did get in there. I guess somebody gave him a little bit of a shove. And yeah, this is this is how it looks. It looks really nice. And of course, you also see your control inputs. Back a little bit to the left here, you can see the plane, of course, doing that, corresponding with the uh, movements of my joystick on the, st on the stick here in the Heinkel 11, and of course also the pedals right there for the rudder. Okay, let's just level this plane out once more. And to the left, you can also see the thrust together with the pitch moving. Let's just keep it on a moderate setting here. I don't want to be going much faster or much slower. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this is also that I can show you the stations, the different stations in the plane. So let's have a look at the first gunner here, the nose gunner. And he is, of course, armed with the 20 millimeter we gave him. That's us. That's us right there. And as you can see in the back, he has all these ammunition belts that are available for him. And let's give him control of the gun. There we go. And what's also nice to see is that they have added a reload. Now, I'm not sure if the reload is now available already for the uh, Junkers 87 or for the IL-2, but it is available for the the bombers. So that's good. Uh, let's get to the next station, and that is the uh, Top Gunner. As you can see here, we're on top of the uh, the aircraft. And one nice little feature is once we take the gun, control of the gun, the travel shield kind of slips back and we're able to move freely. With a nice little arc here, we can even more or less go to the front. Of course, we can't go completely to the front there, but it works. And just fire freely at any anyway, planes that uh, come and say hello. And of course, we also have a little bit of information right there, just to the right of the gun. I think that's altitude and time and that also tells the uh, the top gunner if it's safe to I presume uh, slide back the canopy so let's just put that travel shield back and look down and there you can see the interior the belts for the uh, guns are in there a couple of things I guess this is a radio operator or something navigator actually navigator sounds more accurate and let's move on to the next station, and that is the, I think this is the belly gunner facing rewards. And of course he has full control of his gun as well. Looking back we see the bombs, and somewhere over there, yeah, this is the, this is the other gun actually. I think this guy can actually control both guns, so this is 20mm. Of course we're not going to fire it as long as those 1000 kilogram bombs are attached to our plane. Um, so let's just jump into the next station, and that is inside the aircraft. Once again, one gunner controlling two, two nice little uh, MGs here. And you can also look down on the belly gunner and the navigator, and you see all these drums here for the guns. Nice little models here, really nicely done. Is this a fire extinguisher? Again, guys, I have no idea about bombers, so if any of you guys have more information on anything you see right here, Put it down below, absolutely. Tell me about this plane and uh, educate me as well. Now let's go back to the next station and that is of course the pilot right here. And now we have a special little treat for you guys. And that is the Bombardier site. And this is actually interactive with the mouse. Um, so I can change the wind angle, uh, wind speed. Yeah. So let's just check. Uh, doesn't seem to be anything, so let's just go back. And I can change the altitude. In fact, it would be nice if I knew the altitude. My altitude is... Uh, where is it? There is it. There is it. Okay, so we're roughly... What is it? 600 meters? No, 700 meters. I think this thing actually doesn't work. No, this thing doesn't work, does it? Okay, so that's a nice little inform observation. These things don't seem to be working just yet. Does the 
Artificial Horizon. The Artificial Horizon does work. Oh no, they do work. False alarm. False alarm. So we're on 800 meters. Okay. And let's just put that into targeting computers. 800 meters, roughly. Uh, our airspeed, what was it? 300 kph, more or less. Ooh, that moves now. And we're just going to drop all the bombs at the same time. And... Oh no, we don't have any bomb doors. And we're just gonna... Throw two 1000 kilogram bombs on that tree right there. And there we can see them go. And I guess this is... Observation... Device, where we just look how they fall. There's that tree. Oh, that poor tree. Uh, those didn't explode. Those didn't explode, did they? It might be. It might just be. Let's make a little bit of a radical maneuver here. In the attempt of seeing if we're... Oh, no. Oh, I presume I had them on a delay or something. But ouch. That poor tree. Look at that crater. Just imagine what the 2,500 kilogram bomb could have done there. Absolutely breathtaking, that destruction. Just, yeah, just imagine what you could do with these bombs against a train station or a troop convoy or a ship or a bridge. Pretty sure we'll, we'll see dedicated combat uh, crews only flying these aircraft and that would, I presume, be a lot of fun as well. Very, very happy with how this plane turned out, but then again, I don't know much about bombers, so this for me really is amazing. Um, and I really enjoy it. And this really, f I get the feeling again flying in Claude, that is uh, Chris of Dover, and just, you know, trying to sneak myself over the channel and uh, bomb some radar station or, or an airfield. This is really the feeling that I get back, and that's a good feeling. That's a really, really good feeling to have. Just looking outside there. Great, absolutely great. Now, for those of you who are interested in the uh, pictures of the Heinkel 111, just hang on a little bit because the update also brought other good news. Oh, more buttons right there. So the other good news is, well, you see it right there. They have updated the 190 cockpit once more. And what they've done is they have lowered the Revy side, as you can see right there. And if we pop back to default view, we can also see the lower instrument bar. So that's very nice adjustments. I think, however, the nose is not as visible as it should be. But this is definitely my favorite uh, change to the cockpit yet, and also my favorite cockpit that they have brought out yet from the three different versions they had. So, yeah, nice little thing to see here that they've uh, looked at the concerns of the community and have addressed them within, well, two or three weeks now, so that's really nice to see. So yeah, and now the promised Heinkel 111 pictures. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, well, put them down below and let me know. And as always, have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.